Hi people, it's Archivist here with my third video of the day. Yes, that's right, I really have nothing better to do. And today I want to talk about how GTA 5 is the new crisis. So, if you go back to 2007, a game called Crisis came out and blew us all away with its amazing visuals. But the thing was, very few PCs could actually run Crisis at its maximum settings. It was astonishingly demanding and astonishingly beautiful, something that even today still looks pretty good. And I've seen some parallels between it and GTA 5. And I say this because I recently got a new computer, I've mentioned that I think at least once or twice, and um, it's got a GTX 980 Ti, 16GB uh, of DDR4 RAM, i7 hex core, and well, those kind of specs I was hoping would mean I could play any game at 1080p at max settings. But it turns out there's one pesky game that won't quite get in line, and that is GTA 5. GTA 5 at its highest settings is extremely demanding especially when it comes to its advanced settings when you can enable long shadows, high resolution shadows, extended distance scaling, it gets uh, very tough on the GPU. So the reason I think it's particularly similar to Crisis are for three key reasons that make GTA 5, like Crisis before it, the main go-to benchmark. Actually we'll say four. Number one, there is actually a benchmarking tool in the game that allows you to very easily see what the frame rate is and how the game looks in motion. Very helpful, very useful. But then there's scalability. Scalability is where the graphics can be turned up and down and the difference between low and maximum is very big. So it means that if you're running it on a very powerful system, you'll get very good visuals. But if you're on a low end system, you can turn the settings down and get an inferior experience, but at least it will run on your computer. And GTA 5 does that. Also, it has to be demanding. As I've previously said, GTA 5 is a very demanding game at its highest settings, and that is necessarily to basically stress test your system. You don't want a game that looks really good but isn't very demanding because then you're not really pushing your system. That's why, although Battlefront is an amazing looking game, because it's so well optimised, it's difficult to tell if it's your system or the fact that the game has just run so well. But at the same time, GTA 5 isn't poorly optimised, it's just that it's an open world, meaning that there's a hell of a lot the game has to render at once, especially in certain locations. And then there's, of course, it has to look good. And for an open world game, GTA 5 looks technically very good, but it also, I think where it especially excels is the level of detail. It's a it's a massive open world, and unlike many open worlds, it doesn't fall into the trap of having large, boring, kind of almost empty open areas. It's a game where every little place is just a little bit different, and it feels handcrafted, it feels dynamic. And for those reasons, GTA 5 is, I'd say, the go-to benchmarking game for any system. Of course, to give some context, I'll be showing you GTA 5 running on my PC and hopefully I'll get a snapshot of some of the graphics settings that I'm running the game on. But I just wanted to mention two particular settings that are very demanding on the GPU and really make the difference between this being just a game that, you know, is quite demanding and looks quite good and an actual legitimate benchmarking high-end tool. So... The first is the grass settings of all things. If you go into certain locations in the game and have your grass set to ultra, the game's frame rate can tank even on the absolute highest end systems. I wouldn't be surprised if even 980 Ti SLI setups can actually run the game at the highest settings when you're in these really high built up grass locations. And the second is anti-aliasing. And more than most games I play, I feel that anti-aliasing is especially necessary in GTA 5. Going back to the original PlayStation 3 version of the game and the PlayStation 4 after it, I felt as if the weakest part of the presentation was the aliasing. I felt that because, and this is a case with games that have a lot of detail in them, there's so many little fine lines, there's a lot of areas where the game is very susceptible to alias crawling. And... As a result, it can actually get very distracting at certain locations. So I am tempted to turn the anti-aliasing up, but at the same time, it really hits the frame rate. So what I've got at the moment is a combination between FX AA and 
MSAA times two. You can turn this up to eight if you want. That obviously hits the system very hard. And if you're between two times MSA or four times, you can enable TXAA, which is a really polarizing form of anti-aliasing because although it's really effective at getting rid of crawling, which is very annoying. Uh, in fact, I'd say it pretty much outright eliminates it when paired with four times uh, MSAA. It also blurs the image in quite a substantial way, not reducing the resolution, but there is a definite blur. So some people love it, some people hate it. Personally, I'm someone who takes on a game-by-game -game basis. I'm not a massive fan of the way it works in GTA 5, and to be honest, it hits the frame rate too hard for me to justify it. So this is why I believe GTA 5 to be the new crisis when it comes to benchmarking your new systems, no matter how new they are. As always, people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.